In the previous video, we talked about the velocity field, and then we talked about uh, the descriptions of the flow in terms of Lagrangian description and the Eulerian description. And with the Lagrangian description, we were following the individual particles, whereas with the Eulerian description, we were looking at a fixed point of interest in space and observing different particles as they passed by within that fixed space. In either of the cases, though, when we are applying Newton's second law onto any fluid element, we have to be able to describe the particle's acceleration. So for the Lagrangian method, which is not used frequently in fluid mechanics, we can describe the fluid uh, acceleration for each particle as the particle's acceleration. So A equals A, which is the function of time. But for the Eulerian description, we describe the acceleration field not only as a function of time, but also as a function of position, also as a function of the spatial coordinates, without actually following any particular particle. So if, for example, we are looking at a fluid particle as it is moving along its path line that is traced here, then at this location, at this point of interest, say we've got a particle A, at a certain time t within this region of interest. Now, at this point, the velocity of the particle, the velocity of the particle a, which I'll denote by va over here, is a function of the location and the time. So the velocity vector I can write in terms of the velocity vector of particle a, which is a function of the position vector and time t. And then I can basically go ahead and write the position vector, expand it as well. And how do I expand it? Well, this position vector ra over here has components, has spatial components. So it has component xa, which is a function of the time, and it has ya, which is a function of the time here, and then za, which is a function of the time t here. And then last of all, we've got the uh, time component as well of the velocity vector. So this is our particle's velocity being denoted by Va here. And Xa, Ya, and Za here define the location of the moving particle. What this shows is that because the velocity can be a function of the position and the time, that means that the value of the velocity can change because of change in time as well as the change in the particle's position as well. And now, if we want to imagine what the acceleration would be, then acceleration of a particle is the time rate of change of its velocity. We know that from physics. So acceleration of a particle is the time rate of change of velocity. And that means that we have to dive into calculus and we have to take the derivative of the velocity of the particle a, which is going to basically be the time rate of change if the derivative is with respect to time. And this is going to give us the acceleration of particle a at time t, right? So yeah, this is what we have here. And when we take the de derivative now of this entire term here, this derivative we will have to apply the chain rule of differentiation here because uh, the velocity is changing with respect to not only time but also the spatial derivatives as well. So then that means that uh, partial derivatives come into play as well. So this component over here, if I write this one first, the change that takes place in velocity, so change in velocity as the time changes, so partial Va by partial t, plus the change in velocity according to the spatial coordinates now, but we have to make sure that we are consistent with how we are looking at the derivative now. So if we want to expand the derivative for, uh, say, x here, xa, then 
we're going to have change in velocity of particle A as change in the spatial coordinate takes place, so change in x. And to make it consistent and bring about time over here, we have to take the derivative of so multiplied by the derivative of xa with respect to time. So dxa over dt. And then for each spatial coordinate, we can do that. So this is the equation we come down to. And now if we look at, for example, this term carefully, this is change in time by uh, sorry, change in position by time. So in other words, this is the velocity component. And because we're only looking at change in the x component of time, that was our change in the x component of position uh, with respect to time, then that means that this is the u component of the particle's velocity. So this is u of particle a the x component of velocity. This is the y component of velocity, which is Va. And then we've got the z component of velocity, which is Wa here. So we can actually simplify this equation and write these terms here. So simplifying it, this is how we can write this equation. We've got the uh, time derivative here of velocity and then we've got the x component of velocity ua multiplied by partial va by partial x plus va partial va by partial y and the z component as well and now because at this position uh, at this region of interest when we're talking about the Eulerian description there could be any particle in here right so then we know that we can just drop off this reference to particle A and it would still be valid for any particle, right? So we can obtain the acceleration field from the velocity field just by writing this equation. We can drop the subscript capital A here. And this is the equation that would give us the acceleration field. And then we can, this is in the vector form right now, and we can write the scalar components as well in terms of the acceleration in the x direction and y direction and in z direction as well. So for the acceleration in x direction, we're going to have the component of velocity in the x direction, which is u, so partial u by partial t, plus u into partial u by partial x, plus v into partial u by partial x, partial y, sorry, plus w into partial u, by partial z because we are only looking at the x component of the acceleration and then the, so on the y component and the z component they're going to be in the same manner as well so here you see that that you've got the x component of the acceleration so you're going to substitute the velocity term by the x component of velocity term and for the y uh, component of acceleration, you're going to substitute the y component of velocity in all of these terms. And for the z component of acceleration, you're going to substitute the z component of velocity in all of these terms. So this gives you the scalar components of this vector form of the acceleration field. And a lot of times, this result here is written in shorthand notation. And the way to do that is we just write acceleration equals D, capital D, V by DT. And the capital D by DT over here is known as the material derivative. So this is how the capital derivative term looks here. So you can substitute plug in if you are looking at the velocity. So you can plug in the velocity here. And you're going to have this same equation here, right? So material derivative, it's called material derivative or substantial derivative. It's a shorthand notation. And uh, this is the material derivative operator, d by dt. 
So essentially, we can make use of this concept of material derivative, not just for acceleration, because when we're looking at acceleration, we can just substitute velocity vector here, and it would give us acceleration. But that's not all. We can uh, basically go ahead and write this notation for other fluid parameters as well. Like, for example, if we were looking at temperature, we could just substitute uh, temperature here, d temperature, capital T by dt, and that would give us uh, the temperature in the form of the material derivative or any other um, fluid parameter that we're looking at. Another way to write the same thing, if we want to shorten this new notation even further, is if we write it in these terms. So the time derivative, we leave it as it is, but the spatial derivatives here, we combine all of these and we write them in this dot product notation here. And this dot product here, we dot del operator here, this is called the del operator. So this thing basically represents your, these three terms combined together. And this bracket over here, this is not empty. So if you're, uh, this is empty because we're only looking at the notation right now, but for example, if we were to substitute the velocity here, uh, you would have the velocity term here, and then, so you're gonna have the velocity term here, and then you're going to have partial v by partial t here, plus this dot product of velocity and the del operator, and then you're gonna have velocity here again. So if you were looking at, for example, temperature, you would substitute capital T here, capital T over here, and capital T over here as well. So if you're wondering why we've got this velocity here, even if we're looking at the temperature term, that's because of these velocity components here. So they remain, no matter what the fluid property is, the velocity is gonna stay here, right? So that's why you've got this velocity vector here multiplying by the del operator. Not multiplying, it's the dot product. Um, and then you've got the fluid parameter that you're looking at, okay? So that is what the material derivative is, and it's really useful not just for the acceleration field, but also in terms of if you're looking at the temperature field or so on and so forth. Now from this equation, you can also see that you've got two different types of terms here. You've got the time derivative term, which is this one, and then you've got the spatial derivatives, which are these three over here. So the time derivative portion of this is usually known as the local derivative. And if you're looking at acceleration, then the time derivative is that of velocity. Then this is termed as the local acceleration. All right, so you, you've got the local acceleration over here, this term. And this is important because this local acceleration term, if we were looking at steady flow, because there are no changes taking place in time then, so then this term would be equal to zero for the steady flow. So that means that the local effect vanishes for steady flow. But if we were looking at unsteady flow, and then um, if we were looking at any parameter here now, velocity, temperature, pressure, whatever, then that would be changing, right? So that means that local acceleration is going to be present in that case for unsteady uh, flow. Then you've got these three terms, the portion of this entire derivative, uh, of the portion or the portion of the material derivative, which is represented by the spatial terms. And this, all of these three combined, uh, give us the convective derivative. So you've got the local acceleration over here, and then you've got the convective acceleration here. So this is your convective acceleration. And well, if you look at the acceler uh, if we look at the equation, then yeah, mathematically we can see that it, you know, uh, this term is being defined as the local acceleration, whereas these three terms are being defined as the convective acceleration 
altogether. And this is also known as the advective acceleration. So, but like, we have to think about this physically as well, that what does it mean? What does convective acceleration mean? So that is pretty evident from the equation as well, that you've got changes taking place in X, changes taking place in Y, changes taking place in Z. So you've got changes taking place in your um, spatial um, derivatives, in the spatial coordinates. And what that represents is that there is a fluid motion that is taking place from one point in space where the parameter has one value to another point in space where the value is different, right? So that is what is important here, that you've got the local acceleration, which gives you the changes as they take place in time. And then you've got the convective acceleration, which gives you the changes as they take place in space. So say if you were looking at a pipe, uh, a constant diameter pipe, if you were looking at a constant diameter pipe, and you wanted to see what the acceleration was in here. Now the acceleration would have two components, one which is local acceleration and the convective acceleration. The convective acceleration, what it's actually telling you is that, for example, if you're looking at this fluid particle here, after a certain time t, this particle is going to be, let's say, at this location. So this is called convection, the change in space that is taking place. That is what convective acceleration is giving you. So for a steady flow, this local acceleration term would be zero. But for the steady flow, this term, the convective acceleration term, can be non-zero as well. Because it accounts for the effect of the fluid particle as it is moving, as it is advecting, as it is convecting. So moving or advecting or convecting, they mean the same thing. So that is why it's called convecting, a convective acceleration. Don't confuse yourself. Don't think it's a difficult term to understand. Convection only means movement. Okay. So acceleration because of movement of the fluid particle is convective acceleration. So the fluid particle is moving from one location to a new location in the flow where the velocity field is going to be different. And that basically accounts for the convective acceleration effect. All right, so let's just look at the same concept of material derivative for a um, temperature parameter. So we've got this situation here where we've got a flame that is being shown to you in the figure, and we want to uh, determine the rate, the time rate of change of temperature of the fluid particle that is shown to you, which is particle A, as it moves to, through the temperature field where the temperature field is indicated by this. It's a function of the spatial derivatives and time. And now if we know what the velocity is, or if we know what the velocity field is, then we can apply that. And through the chain rule uh, of differentiation, we can find out the change in temperature, which would be given in these terms. And then we could write this in terms of the material derivative by simplifying dx a by dt, dy a by dt, and dz a by dt in terms of u, v, and w components of the velocity. And we can write the material derivative for temperature now in terms of, got the capital T, which is temperature, in terms of your local component, which is your local derivative here. Uh, and then you've got your convective term here, which shows you the convective effects that are taking place. Uh, so this is how you write the material derivative for the temperature field as well.